Hi, Sagittarius. <laughs> Welcome to your August 2016 love reading. Reina, here. It always helps when the lover's card is at the end of the reading, right? But anyway, the overall energy is rather combative energy. The Five of Wands. As a fire sign, Sagittarius, this is in alignment with the energy of all fire signs, the Wands. But it's a competitive energy. It doesn't have to be necessarily negative, but there may be a lot of jostling or uh, what do they call that stuff I can't think of that name that starts with a J but a lot of um, back and forth between you and another person but it could be among several people and sometimes I would think this has to do with something regarding maybe a love triangle or like in a divorce proceeding it's that kind of um, back and forth and the um, negotiations, but also it's kind of contentious. And so I look at what happened that kind of led to this. And I get the, let's take both of these. Three of Cups and Three of Wands. Two threes, okay? Now what does three represent? Three represents, again, it can be that there is a love triangle, three people involved in a relationship. And uh, obviously, if someone wants to be in a monogamous relationship, three is a crowd. But it can also indicate things related to creativity, including children, and it can also relate to anything that has to do with expansion, like um, business. And uh, it's, it's a very, um, in general, it's a very good number for abundance and things like this. So in some cases, this could be that someone had um, a, a career that they wanted to really invest time in and they didn't have time for a relationship and that created friction within the marriage. But there's that element of other people. So other people may have kind of come into the situation and especially if you're on the younger side and uh, you know sometimes our friendships are the most influential up until the age of, you know, maybe like 30 when people start to pair off and form families of their own. And so if you're like under 30 and you have girlfriends or guy friends and they were kind of influencing you in terms of wanting to um, have you not be with that person, then that might have come in between you. But I do feel that with those two cards together, that you were feeling kind of um, stuck in this relationship. You know, Sagittarius needs 
a lot of freedom. And uh, the number three is kind of like a freedom loving energy because of the expansive quality that it represents. So it's not something where you, if you've been in a, a marriage or other long term relationship where you felt like there was stagnation or that you were being constricted, you couldn't do what you wanted to do, then you're kind of busting out. And so now there's like a little bit of, it's the, the number five is chaotic. So it's not, there's an instability there. And it's kind of like with the, the emotional side or the, 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 the wands is not necessarily emotional like cups, but it's passionate, which means kind of like the ideals that you hold. And as Sagittarians, myself included, we value freedom above all else. And we will really you know, go to the ends of the earth to preserve our freedom. And if we feel that it's being compromised in some way by another person, then we will not be there, most likely. So I look at the situation now, and uh, it's very interesting. I get the Five of Cups and the Ten of Cups. It's like the tail of two cups. The Five of Cups is, look, is like really kind of... Um, being in that process of grief. Another five, you know, we see these um, kind of patterns, fives and threes. But then we have the Ten of Cups. So it could be a situation where your family life is really going good. Something's happening there where you are celebrating something related to family, and yet you're grieving the loss of this relationship. So it's kind of like one area is you know, a nice feeling, and the other one is kind of a mourning uh, period. Now, the higher message in all of this is the Ace of Swords. And this is about you seeing things as they really are. Somehow you're getting to the nitty-gritty. Maybe you got to the nitty-gritty. Maybe you found out something about a partner. Maybe a partner was unfaithful. And that's why I keep, I got those threes. There were three people in the relationship and you didn't know it and then you found out. Or maybe you did know, but you kind of were in denial and you finally got clear. You know, the Ace of Swords is about cutting through the crap and getting to the essence of whatever's going on. And that's another thing that we Sagittarians value is the truth. And when we feel like we're being lied to, it's really not what we like. Um, that's one of our pet peeves is being lied to. We can accept just about anything, but not somebody trying to deceive us. And yet some Sagittarians, like, you know, every other person on earth, there are going to be some Sages who, um, you know, tend to allow themselves to be deceived. And oftentimes I can spot this in the natal chart, uh, certain patterns that I can uncover that speak to that. And it's not because the person is a bad person. It's because they may have grown up, you know, with a difficult childhood and they escaped into fantasy as a way of coping with the ugliness that was going on around them. And they use that escape or that kind of um, obscuring the truth to cope as, as adults. And it can really mess with your upper chakras, you know, like for instance, the sixth chakra is all about discerning the truth and seeing things properly. You know, it's a sixth sense, but even just, um, you don't even need to be like um, Miss Cleo to figure out when somebody is lying to you, you know, you can kind of get a sense without being like this super psychic. You can be, um, you can, you know, read body language. You can just get a feeling inside of yourself. And depending on how much your sixth chakra is blocked, and this is due to like if you were a kid and you saw certain things and your parents or other adults said, you didn't see that, that never happened, you're crazy that kind of thing can be very destructive to a person's sense of being able to, f to, to discern things on 
a less, you know, um, physical level, but in more of an intuitive level. And you can always, you know, balance your chakras. There's all kinds of energy work that you can have done, or maybe even exercises that you can do for yourself. You don't have to just accept that as your permanent reality. But I bring that up because this is one of the reasons why people get into situations over and over again um, and get deceived because they may not trust their intuition or their, the, the, their gut, you know, and then they end up buying a load of crap for a long period of time and they waste time and they get involved. Sometimes they have children with that person and then that complicates it further and it delays when they can get away from a toxic, a toxic situation. So it's always good to um, exercise your intuition. The card that crosses you is the Two of Cups, and I read this in the reverse position because it is a challenge card. And so in the upright position, it would be, you know, committed relationship, taking that relationship to the next level, could be marriage, something like that. It could be like reconciliation if a, a couple is, uh, you know, it has, if a couple has been split up and they get back together. But in the reverse position, there is a lack of forgiveness. There is disharmony within the relationship. In this particular reading, um, it the, the challenge of it, and I think that, of course, any card can be avoided, and we should also just look at these cards symbolically, not as, you know, okay, this is going to definitely happen, but to be careful about lack of forgiveness. If you are, you know, splitting up with somebody, don't make them the enemy even if they want to make you the enemy always you know take the higher ground and don't allow it to devolve into something very nasty because then they will still be with you there will be that energetic bond and that's not what you want it will be a negative bond but it will be a bond nonetheless and you want to completely break away from them so you need to just totally forgive. You know, it's really, you know, if you want to look at it, you can say that uh, forgiveness is totally self-serving in the long run because you're not doing it as some kind of sacrificial thing. You're doing it to benefit your life. And I know that it's easier said than done to just forgive. It's not, it doesn't work like that. I realize that. You may have heard that uh, phrase, fake it until you make it. Well, that can be exactly what you have to do. Maybe you're not really feeling all that uh, forgiving, but if you can take the higher ground and not get dragged down into a lower vibration, that alone can be a victory and can get you away from the situation because that's what the the whole plan is, you know. Um, it's interesting, you know, one of the things I forgot to say is that there may be, when I was talking about the um, possible triangle, you know, three people involved in a relationship, it could be that um, it involves a water sign, which would be a Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces that maybe you were with and now you are interested or in love with um, a fellow fire sign. So a Leo, an Aries, or another Sag. And this would be saying that, you know, the card that crosses you is not to allow that water sign into your life. If that person has been the bane of your existence, don't allow them to manipulate you into, you know, like guilt you into going back to them or whatever is going on that is creating some of the conflict within you. Don't allow that to happen because that person has already proven to be incompatible to you, ultimately. And obviously, you know, it depends on the individual situation. But the um, there is somebody around you. This is um, a card of the external environment. And so this this can be a workplace influence. I don't know if this figures into the relationship you're having with 
the new person, if there is a new person, um, because this is you really working hard. This is a situation, This, is, but this is an outside influence, so it's not really you, but it may be an environment where you're working very hard. It could even be school. It doesn't have to be work, and you may be in a training situation, but it also can indicate that there is an earth sign person that is impacting your relationship in some way. So a Taurus, a, um, a Capricorn, or a Virgo individual that is figuring into whatever's happening. And the advice is the Emperor card, which is associated with Aries. And that was why I realized I did not mention that it could involve two different signs. If you are kind of thinking about two different people, it would be suggesting that the Aries person is the person that is more appropriate for you overall. It can also just be advising you to adopt the mentality of the Emperor, which is really seeing a situation in a very resolute sort of way, you know, not wishy-washy, very, you know, sometimes the Emperor is seen as some kind of uh, rigid figure or controlling figure, but obviously you can't just say, you know, some something is negative like that. It can be that the person, it's using really sound judgment from the highest perspective possible, but also, you know, the Emperor could relate to an actual legal person, like a judge or a lawyer. If you notice, he's holding a, a sword in his hand, so um, sometimes it is somebody who uses their mind um, in their profession, and especially, you know, the sword of truth. I always think of, like, a, the legal prof profession. But whatever happens, the outcome is a lover's card, so all's well that ends well. Whatever's going on, and remember, I started this reading with a rather, um, you know, combative energy. Um, you know, the other thing, too, the lovers can relate to a Gemini individual. And it doesn't have to be the sun in Gemini. It could be, um, it could be like a, a rising sign or a moon sign, something that gives them that um, personality that's very quick and witty mercurial, changeable. But this can, you know, the lover's card can relate to choice, too. And it could be that, you you know, that there is some kind of quandary and that you do have to make a choice. Of course, obviously, this could mean that you are coupling with somebody, getting closer to somebody, getting intimate with somebody, and uh, that's what it's all about in a love reading. So, I hope you enjoyed this Sagittarius. If you'd like a personal reading, click on the link below. Otherwise, have a great August. Bye.